I'm T Jokey and welcome back to part 27. In this part, what we'll be doing is creating a moving door. So, what we're going to do is this here I've got I'll create a couple of models, put them together like I did the walls, and I've also put the left, the right side of the door attached to an empty game object called right, and I've, the left side of the door is the same, it's the empty game object left. I've also created a button here. And this model is different from the models I usually create. As in, this model has two objects in it. We have a stand and we have the button itself. Now the stand, I gave a mesh collider. The reason for this is if I do a box collider, it covers up this button, which is no good for us because we need this button here. And this button here has a normal box collider on it, that way you can actually select it. Now what I want to happen is when I push this button, it opens up the door. If I push it again, it closes it. Now what we can do... Oh yeah, to save time I've also put my player start up here as well, so I can do all this quick. So what we need to do is we need to start creating a few things. Right, first thing we need to do... Is if you go to edit project settings input now I already have created one so I'm going to delete this now now this here is when you launch your standalone you'll be given like a controls option um, actually I'll uh, build a run now just to show uh, show what I mean So we've got input here, and we've got all the buttons here. Now what I'm going to do is instead of doing that, uh, but and what we're going to do is we're going to add another one, basically, to that list. So the player can change it if they want; it's up to them. But we're going to have the default. So I'm going to set this to 19, size 19, and this cancel button here. I'm just going to say use, and then this positive button, which is the button you use to activate it, I'm going to have is E for now. And the reason for this is if you make a button like this, you can have people change their controls before they start the game, so they can have a different use button. If you was to just say you need to press E to open this, well, it doesn't give the player freedom of choice to choose what button they want to use it use instead of E. Some people might use the middle mouse click to do this, so if we create a input, then it gives the player who plays your game uh, freedom to change it to what button they want. Now with that created and named use and the positive button you've set to whatever you want, we've created our little use key now. Now what I need to do is create a couple of scripts. The first script I'm going to call button script. And in this button script I'm just going to create a few things. First of all, what we need to do is we need to do a public GUI skin and then call it game skin. And then create a void on GUI function. Now what we need to do is also I believe we're going to need another couple of functions. So I'm going to say avoid on mouse enter. And avoid whoops. Avoid on mouse exit. This is so when the player hovers their cursor over the button, it comes up with a little message on the screen saying, please press the use key. That's pretty much what that's going to be, really. Now what I'm going to do is make sure I have a GUI skin for this. Yeah, use message window. I've basically just copied window background took deleted the font bit 
the font size, aligned it to middle center. That's all I've done. I've kept the colors and everything. So now I've got that use message box. We're going to create, a, we're not going to create a window for this because I actually don't see the point in creating a window for this. So what we're going to do on the other hand is this script shouldn't actually be too big. So what we're going to do is create our private private ball underscore is hover. And we're going to say false for now. So basically, it's just saying, are we hovering over it? Now in the mouse enter, underscore is hover equals true. And then on exit, underscore is hover equals false. Now with that quite simply done, what we need to do is in our GUI skin, what we need to do is basically say GUI dot skin equals game skin. So our skin is now initialized. And now we need to create another function. So I'm going to call it public void display message. I'm going to say if underscore is hover equals equals true. Let's say a GUI dot box is a new not network new rect. I'm going to say screen because I want it centered in the screen. So I want screen dot width divided by two minus. I think I'm going to have this little message about 200 wide so I want it minus 100 for now and screen dot height divided by 2 minus and I want it below the cursor so I'm going to say plus 30 on that one and I need that as 100 and that is 25 now we're going to say press the use key and then next to it I'm going to have what I called this and use message box. Now I save that off. It's just going to display at the moment some text, hopefully, in the position we want. So if we go to button and we click on the button bit in the box collider because we don't want to attach it to the actual button model because if you look at the model, it's going to say, Oh, please do this. So if we just say on the button bit and then just drag the button script on there and the game skin on here as well then click play and I look at the button if I look at the stand it doesn't do anything if I look at the actual button it doesn't do anything whoops what have I done wrong Oh, I know I've done wrong. It helps if I actually put this in the GUI. And if I go back in. Now I'll test that again. Look around the edge, you don't see anything. If I look at the middle, it says press the use key. But that is wrong. Whoops. Oh, that's minus plus D. What do I do that for? Let's see if that fixed it. No, it wouldn't have. Oh no, I just thought 200. I wanted 200 wide, didn't I? Let's see if that displays correctly. Yes, it does. Press the use key. Now what I want to do is now it's done. We now know that if we press the use key, it's going to work. So we 
we need to set something up. So in here, what we're going to do is if underscore is hover equals equals true. So if the person is looking at the button and the input dot get button down is use because we've set our button up to say use. I want to broadcast this message. Broadcast the message. So messenger broadcast an open door. I'm going to call it move door. Move door. Now, with that done, we also need to create another script now. Now, if we go back to Unity, in our scripts folder, create another script and call it door script. And open that up. Now, in here, I'm just going to do a couple of balls quickly. So, uh, public ball underscore is no, left door, not underscore. It equals false for now. Public ball right door. Now, what I need to also do is I need to have certain positions. So I've got the close position already. It's where the door is at the moment. But I need to create a couple of vector threes. So I'm going to say private vector three. I'm going to say open position left equals new vector three and I think we need three variables so I'm going to say open position I believe because of the scale of the sort of stuff 1.5 f is actually considering my scaling I've got on the level if you couple my models it's going to be exactly it should be the same scaling but you can play around with these if you want and I don't want it to move on the one I don't want it to move on the zone now I copy this and put this here, and I'm going to call that right. I'm going to put a minus in here because I want it to go the opposite way. So one's going to move right, left. One's going to move right. Now if I copy both of these, paste them there, and we say close. Close. And then this one's going to be minus because it's got to go the other way now, and this one's going to be the normal. So now I've got all the positions in, we can start uh, adding some of our scripts. So, what I want to do under here, however, first is I need the messenger. So, I'm going to say void on enable, on enable, Mess and then that way I can have the messenger in there. Now, what I need to also do is kind of public void move door so this is what's going to control our door moving so now we've got the move door function and there we can actually create the messenger so messenger dot add list now i'm going to say it was called move door before wasn't it yep and then move door so now when the message this is called it's going to move the door Under here as well, I want to do a public ball. Actually, I could do this private underscore door open equals false because to begin with, the door isn't open, so it's going to be false. So, I say if score door open equals equals false, then we can execute the code that opens the door. So game object dot transform dot position and then I'm gonna say plus equals underscore open position left. Oh, I 
think I went a bit wrong here. If underscore is oh, sorry, not underscore left door. If it equals true. There we go. If right door. And now I can just copy this. I'll put that here and then change that to underscore open position right. And then under here. Under here I can put oh I don't want that. I can put underscore door open equals true. So the door is open now. Now in here I say else statement. So I'm just gonna say if 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 the door is false then it does this, else it's gonna do this, so I'm going to copy this, put that in here, and I'm just going to say underscore close position left, underscore close position right, and then false. So the door is actually closed now. Now we're not done, and I've not made a mistake anywhere. If we go back to Unity. Check for errors, we're going to get the normal errors we usually get. Now, if we go door left, door right, our game objects that we actually have, not the actual door models, but the gate empty game object we attached them to, if we put a door script in there, and this is the left door, and then the right door, door script as well, and then that's the right door. Now, if I click play, and this works, Press use. If I press the use key now, it does nothing. You can hear it. If I go over here and press the use key, we've got a door open. Now, if I press the use key again, door closed. And you can keep typing away. There you go. Yeah. Um. Basically, if if you've got a different size level and different size doors, you can edit these variables here to state how far or how short the door opens if you really want as well you can make these public so then you can edit them right here in the inspector so you don't have to keep going into the code to tweak them you can tweak every door individually now we have slight problem See, if I was to say grab these two game objects right here, if I was to duplicate them and then move them, actually I'll put them behind these. So we've got two lots of doors. Now if I click play, say so I've got two lots of doors on the level and two separate buttons and all that, if I click OK, it's open both doors. We have no way of distinguishing which door is which. Now where's my button? Where's my button? I'm going to the door script at the moment, where's my button script? Here it is. You've basically got it, if it's found the button, push the button, it opens the door. So what we need to do is we need to do like a little, in the button, we can say that the button dictates which door it opens. 
Now, there's a couple of ways we can do this. There's a couple of ways we can actually do this. We can find a door by a name. So if I click door script here, I should be able to access everything in the button here. So if I say door script, I'm going to say actually in the button script. I'll do it here. Uh, public. I'm going to say string. Not static string. I'm going to say target name. So basically the door name. For now it equals nothing. But I'll just leave that blank then if it equals nothing. Now in my door script. So private. Oh, sorry, public. 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 String. Name. Door name. Set that. Uh, do, 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 do. So what I do? And and. What did I call it? Target name, didn't I? Yeah. Why can't I find it? Door name. Oh, that's why. I'll do everything in here. the key you see we say we again we've used the key use the button right so we send the the message to the door to move it we could probably set it so it has to pass through the door name before it opens so if I go my door script quickly add this to door enable move door so And and door name is equal to target name. Move 
his door. You see, I think I still have the problem, but we shall see. I think I might have a problem actually when I load up the engine, to be honest. So I'm gonna call. See, door name in here. I'm gonna call that. I'm gonna call it um, name door. So I'm gonna copy this. The door left. Main door. And then in the button here, door name main door. Target name main door. So if this doesn't work, I'm gonna have to do another one. So I'm using it opens and it closes. So that does pass that correctly. So what happens if I get these doors here, duplicate them, move them back a couple of times? So it doesn't look a bit weird. Move back a couple of times, and this door here, I'm going to say side door. So I'm going to copy this. So that was. Yeah, so they're now called side door. So if they're called side door and this is called main door, will this work? Well, Actually, would that be a problem because the button has the door name on it? Yeah. So, kind of getting there. Now, I'm going to quickly try and figure this out and I'll be back. I actually fixed my error. It was quite simple. I fixed it within five minutes of pausing the video. See, only one door opens now. And the way I did this is I completely removed the door script off the door left and the door right. And I'm having the button handle everything. So what, if I go up to the button script, I've put in the button script, the door open ball that we have previously. I've also created two public game objects, one for left door, one for right door. We don't need the target name anymore. And then what I've done is I've also copied from the door script over, I've copied the four vector threes that we created. Now with these created, all you have to do is you can delete the on enable we don't need the messenger anymore and in the update function where it says is hover equals equals true and mouse and input dot get mouse get button down use what we do is we put the if door open equals equals false and in here we have left door dot tran do we choose left door dot transform dot position plus equals open position left so almost exactly how we did it before However, we just add in the game object for left door. We did the same for right door as well. And underneath we say door open equals true. And then on the else statement, we have it the opposite way around. We have it close, close, and door open equals false. Now I'll leave this here for a few seconds. There we go. Now, when you say got off, if you go into Unity, what you do is you select the button. The button then, you know, I'll delete the game objects out of here. The button then will have two empty game object slots, left door and right door. If if uh, if you've done like I've done and you've added the model to an empty game object. All you need to do really is drag the empty game object in. So if you select the button and then you click door left and drag it into door left door. And if you've got door right, drag it into right door. So now I'll only open the two doors that you have here. Now if we copy this button here, so 
so we sh I'm going to go over to this door actually over here because I believe I've still got the scripts attached to them now if I go over here and I select the button if I duplicate that and I move that over here and in this in this button here I choose the door left being different buttons and door right being a different button if we click play I go over here just like this use key it's open I go over here use key it's open and we can go through and I can whoa, even close doors behind me although I know I can't get out but still and that is how you create doors with buttons so you can have as many doors and as many buttons in the levels as you want now and all you have to do is add this game object the left and the right door to the left and the right door and it will open those respectively using one script which also means you can delete this uh, door script you don't need any more see even I make mistakes I like to kinda leave them in because that way it shows that I mean you could you could be like I have, I've been programming now for seven or eight years and I forget as much as I learn. It's it's weird, it's mean I have many, many projects that I've created over the years. And if I was to try and think of how did I do that? Well, I can't remember exactly how I did it. I could remake it, maybe make it better, but I can't remember exactly how I did it, so I can go back to my old projects, which I've got many of, and do that that way. But it's all those things. It's everybody makes mistakes. I keep mine in because, I mean, if you have a similar problem to what I just had when you're doing this, like there's a little bug that happens you can see how I solve it um, this was a complete little this was a this was a complete uh, change of edit uh, editing so we're on one script now but it's still still kind of the same principle alright I'm a T Junkie thank you for watching and I'll see you next time bye bye